I want to start out by saying I have an actual uh, Blackhawk backpack. It's a large backpack that is a, a true bug out bag. I also have a vehicle. Uh, I call it a bag, but it's actually a large Tupperware box. It's, it's uh, I don't know, probably 30 gallons. Uh, it has a tent, sleeping bag, things like that. I have a very small day pack bag that I carry. And then I have what I consider the most important bag, which is this bag right here. This is a, a Voodoo Tactical Scorpion range bag, but I don't use it as a range bag. I use it as my uh, automobile bag, and it's really set up more for the case of being stranded um, due to an accident. Maybe you, um, you know, veer off the road, uh, a road that doesn't have a lot of traffic, end up spending the night. Uh, vehicle, you know, stalls, can't get it started. And it's something like that where you spend the night. Also, uh, if you came upon a, uh, an accident scene where somebody needed some real minor first aid, there is a little bit of first aid stuff in there. But it, it's not a true uh, shit hit the fan scenario bug out bag. It's not a zombie apocalypse bag. Like I say, it is a um, strictly a, um, a car bag. It goes with me. And so it's packed a little different. I thought you might find it interesting. Actually, I'm going to try to move through this somewhat quickly uh, just so that we can, uh, you know, otherwise it'll be an hour long video. And uh, like I say, uh, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this, what, you know, what you think compared to what I have in there. Um, on every forum, one of the first things people discuss is, do you carry a, a weapon in your bag? And some guys say, well, I never put a weapon in the bag. Someone could steal it. Other guys say, I've always got a weapon in the bag. Uh, while I normally carry a handgun, I also uh, carry one in this, this vehicle bag. Now, it's, uh, it's not what you think. It's not for hunting. It's not necessarily my frontline defense. It is just more of a, um, of a reassurance. If I um, were stuck out overnight uh, on a deserted road or something, and you know, I, I would want to make sure that I always have something with me, and just on the off chance that I left without my normal everyday carry, this, uh, this does have one. Uh, normally I would show you that the guns are not clear, but I keep this gun loaded, so you know I'll, I'll just try to be real careful with it here, but I'm not going to empty it. I keep it in one of my uh, pocket holsters, and the reason for that is that you know, this is not one that I'm going to, to strap on a belt. Um, it'll work in a blue jean pocket. A little big. It's a uh, J frame size 38. This one uh, is a Charter Arms undercover. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that back up. There's also about a dozen rounds. I think there's uh, actually 15 rounds of uh, additional ammo in here. Like I say, that... If a person were, you know, stranded in this vehicle during the night, I believe that would be adequate. Uh, again, like I said, this is not a zombie apocalypse bag, but I do carry that. Uh, on the other side, I uh, have to wear pretty strong reading glasses, and in case the ones that I have with me, I always have a pair or two with me, but in case they were to be damaged, I carry a, not a very expensive set, but a cheap set of reading glasses. In addition to that, uh, one of the things that I don't go cheap on is I carry a, a good flashlight. Um, this uh, is a uh, Surefire. It is, uh, let me check the model number. It is a Surefire Fury. I don't remember the exact power of this, but it's a two power. It's low, and then you turn on again, and it's, as you can see, it's amazingly bright. I, I think. It seems like this was three to four hundred lumens, but I, I cannot remember. It actually may be stronger than that. Um, the flashlight is something that I just I just don't cheap out on. I, I believe that a good flashlight is, is worth the money that you'll pay for it. I also, uh, like everybody, I carry a compass. Truth be known, I, I don't know how to navigate with a compass. Um, what I figure is that in a situation where if I actually did have to walk through a wooded area, I could use this to uh, maintain a, a steady course of direction. I can uh, line the bezel up with my with my uh, bearing arrow there, and and just at least or heading arrow, whichever that is. I, I'm not a navigator, but at least I could stay somewhat true to my course and not just end up walking in a big circle. I don't carry a uh, hiking map of any kind. Again, like I say, I don't know how to. to uh, 
navigate with one and if at all possible I would stay with my vehicle anyway but I, I do have that like I say just just if nothing else if I had to walk on a road it would give me an idea which direction I was going to go if I was walking through the woods it would keep me in theory from walking in a circle so that's why I carry that uh, I carry a, uh, a small locking saw I have uh, a little better one in my bigger bag this is a Sheffield it's very sharp um, I move up here a little bit. Actually, I may try to relocate the uh, the camera here shortly. In fact, let me just go ahead and and uh, relocate this camera. I don't think that I'll have to actually um, turn it off or anything to get to get a little better view of the items that I pull out of here. I believe that should. That should get it. Um, the um, I also um, at the car wash I buy towels. These are called the Big Blue Towel. They're 20 inch by 40 inch. They're very very durable. I don't know exactly what they're made of. Uh, these things cost about a buck. You put four quarters in the machine, and one of these drops out at the car washes where they have little spray ones. And uh, I, you know I believe this could be used as a as part of an emergency bandage, uh, it could be used to clean things up. I mean, uh, you know, which obviously is the the preferred use for it by them. But you could use it uh, to to filter water. Like I said, there's a lot of, of reasons to have a nice clean towel. Uh, although I don't believe this would be considered sterile, it is packaged, and I do believe that it would be clean if you had to use it as a bandage. I think it would be better than you know a piece of clothing or something that had been worn all day. The only other thing in this one, I carry a, uh, a book with me. Uh, if I'm stuck overnight, uh, I want to have a book that you know I've not read, something to, to entertain me if I've got to wait through the night. Just uh, so everybody knows, this book's called Very Crazy GI. I've not read this, but it's about, it says strange but true stories of the Vietnam War. I'm a uh, I'm very interested in the Vietnam War. I, I uh, came out of, or went into the military just at the, actually right after the Vietnam era ended, uh, quite some time actually after anybody was being shipped over for combat. I graduated in 1974, uh, but I have a great respect for all veterans, but especially the Vietnam veteran because they, uh, they gave it their all over there and came back and then were treated very poorly by a lot of the uh, citizens, not by me, but by, there were a lot of people at the time that were very anti-war and they blamed the uh, soldier, which I think is ridiculous to blame the soldier for the war that the politicians start. But anyway, uh, my hat goes out to all veterans and a, and a special God bless you to the Vietnam veterans because like I say, they, they really got treated kind of dirty. Uh, in the end pocket here, I just, uh, I have two packs each one has four uh, one, two, three batteries in them. Those are for the uh, Purifier light. Those uh, bright, powerful lights like that are battery hogs, so you, you need to carry a little bit. Uh, in this end, something that I always have is a, uh, I have a, uh, a locking, you know, this one's a buck knife. It's a lock blade knife. Uh, I don't know if you can see or not. I'll, I'll try to show you here down, down right here. I, uh, uh, hopefully you can see that, hear it, uh, see the hairs. I keep my knives very, very sharp. Uh, this is not a particularly expensive knife, but it has high quality steel. And uh, like I said, I keep it razor sharp. That one's for fine work. I also keep uh, several of the alcohol moist towelettes. I don't remember what brand these are, but they're alcohol based. These would be for, you know, obviously swabbing a wound, uh, insect bites, uh, just general hygiene. And I, I keep several of those. Infection is a, uh, a critical thing if you happen to be stranded somewhere for, you know, uh, more than just a few days. You'd want to be sure you had something to, to keep a wound or a, a bite clean. Um, in, the, um, in the big pocket on this side, is mostly uh, creature comforts, hydration, and uh, and food. I have a uh, Aquamira. This one's brand new. I try to keep anything uh, in my bags new. 
unopened, the instructions with it. Um, I don't know if you can see the brand name, that's Aquamere. It's a very, very good bottle and it's not real expensive. Uh, like I say, this one, the seal's not been broken on it. This is the uh, type of bottle where the filtration is built in. You can fill this with Pond Creek, you know, whatever type of water. Uh, squeeze it to get the water going through there. Wet the uh, filter and then just drink right out of the bottle. I believe this is a uh, one micron filter in these, which I think will get rid of pretty much anything, except uh, I do not believe that it will, uh, that will, it will get rid of a virus. But as far as any kind of contamination, uh, you know, it, it will work. And like I say, I keep the instructions and everything in there with it. Uh, also, because you may be in a situation where you have to boil water, uh, I keep a, a metal bottle. Uh, this one's American made. It's by Liberty Bottle Works. They're, they're a good company. This one's got Bass Pro advertising garbage painted all over it. But by doing that, uh, I got the bottle for $1.99 on a blowout sale where I think they're about 12 bucks if you actually buy them without it. Uh, it has a very good uh, bayonet. I don't know if you saw it or not, but it doesn't thread. It's a bayonet lock lid. It has little tabs here that would allow you to put a piece of wire or something around it if you needed to hang it, or you could always set it up higher. But as long as you didn't drop this right down in the flame, you can you could actually boil in this if you needed to, although it does have a, a painted finish on it, which uh, I'm sure would get ruined. And it also appears to have a painted finish inside, which could or could not be a factor. I hadn't, hadn't really ever thought about that, but I don't think that if you heated it slowly and boiled your water in it, that the paint and finish would, would be any health hazard. It made this color. Uh, in addition to those, still on the uh, hydration side, I carry, I always carry some drinking water. Uh, this is the, the worst possible way as far as cost effectiveness goes to uh, carry water. It's four ounces and I think these things are 30 or 40 cents a pack. Um, it's kind of expensive, but there's uh, four of them in there so that, you know, you could get by until you were able to figure out where to, to seek out a better water supply. Um, it's, it's a five year shelf life. These are good. Uh, these are good till 2016. So I've actually had them in there a while. It won't be long till I rotate these out, even though like I say, they're actually good for a few more years. Uh, also, still on the hydration deal, uh, I have some Aquamira, same same brand that makes the uh, bottle. I have some Aquamira uh, chlorine dioxide uh, water treatment. Uh, the, the chlorine dioxide is a little better than the uh, iodine, and uh, although it's a little more expensive, uh, that one says 250. I wish I'd have got them for that. They, they were actually 12 bucks. I bought them at a survival show, but there's enough there to treat all the water I'll ever have to treat in my life. Um, so it's a part A, part B, still in the package, still has the directions in the package and everything so that I don't have to memorize how many drops of each to use. Um, there's a, uh, on the food side, I don't carry a lot of food, and the reason is you can go a couple of weeks if you have to, literally before you know before you have to worry about starvation. I have uh, this is six bars of the survival bars. These particular bars are Food Lab Inc., which they're not bad. I mean, they're not as good as the Mayday bar. I normally have Mayday bars. Uh, that's what's in my big bag. And uh, you can see that these are, you know, uh, like I say, six fifty for six bars, about a buck a bar. I think that's kind of standard at most of the shows. They're vacuum sealed. Uh, let me see if these have a date on them. These are good till six sixteen. So, like I say, these will get you by. Actually, uh, there's twenty four hundred calories in there, and you can get by uh, quite a while on you know four to six hundred calories a day. It's, I mean, it's not really going to be living large, but you know, it, it'll get you by. Like I say, starvation is really a pretty low risk in a deal like this. Uh, I have uh, some candles. I usually carry, uh, I think there's six in the bag. Yeah, again, if I was broke down or, or stranded at night and uh, 
was going to spend the night. I, you know, I could light a candle, read my book, something to stay calm until the adrenaline went down and I was able to sleep. Uh, like I say, so, you know, I, I think it is, I think little things like that are nice. I think they help give you a calming effect and the calming effect in turn increases your, your likelihood of, of survival by quite a bit. Um, there are, um, on this side, on the inside, I have three of the uh, zip packs of, uh, this is a uh, fire starting wafer. Uh, I don't know what you would call, whether you'd call it tender or kindling or I mean I would call it tender but there's three three packs of this and uh, it uh, is supposed to light very easily I've, I've never actually broke one up I've never broke one up and used it it says uh, just light the wrapper and uh, but most of the people that I know actually break these in half because it doubles the amount of, of fire starting that you have and uh, I'm, I'm Big believer in fire and shelter and water. Like I say, the the uh, food source I think is a little bit, a little bit overstated, but or or, or overemphasized. I mean, I also have the uh, strike most anywhere matches. They're not really anywhere, even though they say they are. And uh, this particular orange bottle has the striker on the bottom. Uh, it's not the greatest setup, other than it is at least a. Uh, Kind of a metal rod it's a little more durable i have another pack of them in there that i'll show you in a minute that have the uh, sandpaper in them i have this is one of my two supplies of uh, duct tape this one's quite a bit bigger than uh, i also have another smaller one of camo but duct tape i think is critical everybody jokes about it but truthfully i mean there's there's not much you can't fix with it um, this little bottle here goes back to the fire this is dryer lint. Underneath the dryer lint is a, uh, I think, four or six uh, cotton balls soaked in uh, Vaseline. And uh, like I said, between this and the, the zip sticks, uh, you know, I don't have any doubt that I've got enough tinder to get me by under just pretty much any, any circumstances as far as moisture goes. I'll leave that out for a minute. I've got, of course, the... Uh, the paracord everybody carries. This is bright orange. It probably looks a little pink on the camera, but it's it's actually bright international orange. Uh, again, this this kit's not designed to hide me from an enemy. It's designed to help me get you know survive till I get discovered. So the fact that this is bright orange, if I need to, I can cut some smaller strands and leave them hanging. Or like I said, if I have this laced around, I mean it'll it'll contrast a little, and every little bit of visibility helps. Um, there's, uh, I believe there's 50 feet of that there is what's there. Uh, I also have not a, a multi-tool, but I do have a very good, this one's made by Browning. Um, it's a very good pair of, uh, of heavy duty pliers with a wire cutter here. And, uh, like I say, I, I have, uh, a, a multi-tool also, which, for some reason, I was playing with a minute ago and forgot to put back in the bag. It is uh, sitting right here. But I also I carry a. Uh, this is the uh, more traditional Gerber. This is the Gerber, you know, pliers, knife, everything. I I don't know how much a guy actually needs the whole multi-tool, but I do carry it. I uh, I believe in redundancy. I carry a lot of extras. Of stuff I uh, study a lot of things that I probably don't need to I mean I have a uh, kind of a motto that that uh, you know I, I came up with which is that you can uh, you can learn a million things and never use them and it won't hurt you but there's one thing you could fail to learn that could cost you your life and I mean you'll never know what that thing is until you're in the situation where you need that knowledge so the more you can carry and the more you can learn, the, the better chance you have of surviving in any situation. Uh, on a medical side, in addition to the uh, sanitizing wipes and stuff, I have a, uh, the uh, field type. This is not military issue, but it's the field type basic 
first aid kit there. I, I hope you can see it all right. Uh, it has the, uh, and uh, it is one of the few things, the first aid kits are one of the few things that I think when you get them, you should immediately open them because I have opened them before and seen stuff that was not in them that was listed. So I went actually went through and inventory this, but it has the, uh, you know, the, the band-aids, the uh, adhesive strip type, and then also the, uh, the elastic bandages, the uh, sterile sponges. It has an instant ice pack that you break and squeeze, tweezers, scissors. Uh, it has a small lancing cutting type tool. It has a little bit of antiseptic soap, antiseptic wipes, some iodine wipes, some alcohol wipes a uh, antibody cream, uh, some adhesive tape, and some pain reliever, which I, judging by the color of it, I believe that it is uh, Advil. But anyway, uh, I carry that. In addition to that, I also carry a uh, quick clot. I have more of those in my bigger bag, and I also have a couple of really big ones in my car box. But I, I believe in these. Uh, you know, in an automobile accident or in a fall, I mean, you could have a uh, puncture wound or a large gash that caused a tremendous amount of bleeding. I mean, there are a tremendous amount of veins in your arms, the backs of your hands, the uh, top of your head, things that, you know, could that, that could be a life-threatening deal if you were uh, out without help. So, you know, I, I carry one of these, and I, even though they're a little bit expensive, uh, I recommend that you get one. They last quite a while, and uh, this one is good till uh, October of, of 14, but I bought it in uh, 2009 or 2010. I don't remember which one. So it was either good for four or five years. Uh, so, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're worth it. I, my guess is it would probably work after uh, 2014, but, you know, I would replace it anyway. Uh, this also is vacuum packed, and like I say it's, it's a it's a nice. I think it's a nice thing to have. I'm going to uh, put this stuff back in while I uh, go to another uh, section of the bag, just so I can keep room on the on the table here. And uh, I apologize if I'm moving real fast. I actually did this video once and yacked for 45 minutes and so I, I deleted it and redoing it so that it's not quite so long. Uh, I believe I was already, no I was not in this one. Uh, yeah I was in this one, I apologize. I thought I was. Uh, on the other side here is uh, another big uh, deal. I have uh, some, this is some uh, self-sealing tape. Uh, they sell it for plumbing and things like that. It's waterproof. It bonds to itself rather than having an adhesive on it. So you would have to wrap it a few times to get it to bond. But then uh, once you do, uh, it won't loosen up, you know, if it's bled on or gets wet or anything like that. Uh, there's, uh, I think, 20 feet of it here, 25 feet. It was a couple bucks. It's pretty cheap insurance if you need some some uh, tape that will hold up to uh, a little bit of blood or water. It's another pack of candles. Uh, like I said, I usually carry six of those. Those are uh, rated as a uh, nine-hour candle. So, I mean, that's that's a lot of uh, candle power, but, you know, that way you could also have more than one going in your vehicle. Uh, here's a little bit more uh, duct tape. This is some camo duct tape. Uh, wrapped around this this uh, pill bottle that I don't use anymore. Inside this pill bottle is nothing but one of those cheap picture hanging kits that you uh, buy that uh, has some little eye screws and uh, I think about 24 to 30 inches of wire, maybe 36 inches, but it's just a small roll of wire that I, I twisted into a figure eight and then shoved it down in there. Uh, I uh, stuck a couple of uh, alcohol wipes on top of it, mostly just to uh, contain the uh, the rattling somewhat because it was annoying. But uh, you know, you could rig a snare with that. Although again, this is not really a uh, survival bag where I anticipate doing a lot of trapping or anything like that. But you could rig that wire to hang your bottle over a fire. You, uh, if a door was 
sprung on your vehicle or something and didn't want to stay closed. I mean, you could use it to, to pull it closed if it was cold enough that the airflow was making a difference. There's a lot of good reasons to have some wire and a few little screws and stuff. The screws are pointed and have threads on them that can thread in, plus with the pliers you could stick the end of the needle in there and turn it if you needed to. So, like I said, I just, you know, I don't have a lot of hardware in my bag, but I think that's, you know, something that's, that's worth having. This, uh, I know you've probably seen this, a, sorry, I bumped right into the camera, but a million times, everybody has one of these. It says mil spec plus, that's a joke. I mean, this is not mil spec anything. It's made in China. It's a 52 by 84 inch emergency blanket. It's silver on one side, gold on the other. And, and uh, it says waterproof, reflective, uh, reflects sun and, and heat for cooling in hot climates and, and all that. What, what it really does is it, it makes the company about three bucks. But I carry one. Uh, I think that there are, you know, it could be set up and used as a signaling device. It probably would make a decent heat reflector. Although these things are so fragile, if you get any kind of a nick in them, they just tear right through. So don't bet your life on one of these. I, I'm not saying not to carry one. I do. But like I say, this is really not a serious piece of gear. I mean, it's, uh, like I say, it's something that's in almost every survival kit. And I'm sure it's got its purposes, but it's not really any more durable than a, uh, than a garbage bag. Uh, speaking of garbage bags, I have a 44-gallon uh, uh, heavy-duty lawn and leaf bag here. This is a, uh, I believe, Hefty brand, I think it was. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's very, very durable. Uh, now, there again, I mean, I could take a knife and puncture it easily or a sharp stick, but it's, it's, it's definitely durable, you know, in the uses that you would have for it. Uh, you can cut a hole in this thing if you need to, pull it down over you and use it as a rain shedding like a poncho or a rain jacket. You can uh, obviously set on it to keep yourself dry if you're setting on wet ground. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uses for this. Plus, I mean, you can, you can haul water in it. Uh, you know, there, there's just a lot of uses. And I mean, these things weigh virtually nothing and they cost virtually nothing. So I think at least one good large lawn and leaf bag in your survival kit's a good idea. I also, uh, as you know, if you watch a lot of my videos, I make uh, holsters. I buy my rivets in bulk. I usually buy them in uh, uh, 10 of these little bags at a time. These are 100 bags. I think I buy rivets 1,000 at a time. And um, it, it's a Hanson rivet, but the, the point of this is not about the rivets or the holsters. This is just one of the most durable little Ziploc bags I've ever seen in my life. And so... Uh, every time, you know, I get in a load of rivets, I usually grab one of these and I mean this thing's so thick and I mean so strong. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, you, you just literally, I mean, it, it'll stretch a little bit, but you, you can't tear it. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's drinking cup size if you needed it to, to hold water. It, you know, you could, uh, if you had to leave a note and it was particularly wet conditions, you could uh, put your note down inside of this bag and then seal it. Um, there's a lot of things, and again, it takes up virtually no room. So I think a good Ziploc bag is good. This one, uh, you'll probably get a little bit of a chuckle out of. Some of you that cook may recognize what this is. A lot of you won't, but you can see it's bright gold mylar. On the inside, it's uh, silver. These are uh, bags. Again, they're probably not the strongest bag, although I do believe that they're stronger than my... Uh, than uh, that space blanket, but of course they're also quite a bit smaller. Uh, these will not hold water because they have a hole punched in them where the tag was. And what these are is bags that my uh, that hams came in. I bought spiral cut hams, and uh, they come in these bags, and the bags were clean because inside of this bag was a plastic sealed bag. And I just thought, boy, a couple of those would make nice little uh, heat reflectors, signaling devices. Uh, I believe that you could take these without much trouble and uh, stick them up under your shirt, you know, between your shirt and your body with this uh, gold mylar. I believe that it would hold in some heat, reflect some body heat back on you, definitely block a little wind. Um, you know, and again, they're, they're light and they were free. 
So, you know, I carry them because I can see more than one use for them. Uh, you can actually take your hand, put it in here, and hold it here, and feel the heat start to to generate from your hand. I mean, it's it actually starts to warm your hand like a glove. And uh, so, I mean, they, they do work. That you know, like I say, they were they were free. So, uh, like I said, I carry those. I have uh, my fixed blade knife. I mentioned earlier that <coughs> excuse me that I also uh, carry a fixed blade knife. The reason I carry a saw is I think that you're real prone to an injury if you take a uh, razor sharp knife and start swinging it around in the woods trying to cut limbs. I think it's safer, obviously, to lay it on a limb and baton it with another, you know, with another limb or something. But I think the saw is safer yet. It's a beautiful uh, sheath. This sheath was handmade for me by another leather maker in town. That's uh, back when, oh, about four years ago, before I started doing anything, uh, they made this for me, and uh, it's a beautiful job. The uh, actually, I'm probably still not quite this good with just my, uh, you know, my good-looking leather. Uh, th these guys did a heck of a job, but this houses a uh, a knife made by a guy named Jay Higgins. I know there's another uh, YouTube video on about him, and uh, I will do just a video one of these days on this knife. Uh, th th this is the greatest knife I've ever had in my life. It's a stainless. It's a, I'm sorry, not a stainless. It's a 1095 steel knife. It's an eighth of an inch thick in the back. The uh, edge is so sharp that with my uh, fire striking, um, which I, is actually coming up next, uh, you can take this and drag it down a ferro rod, and I mean, it just throws sparks like a like an arc welder. Uh, this thing uh, has been through the mill. It's uh, four years old, I believe, and uh, it was uh, fairly expensive, but, you know, for a custom knife, it wasn't that bad. Um, I think it was... I don't remember how much it was, but I'll show you something crazy about this knife. We turn this uh, light on here. Hopefully you can see a little better. And uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but surely you can see that. Uh, that is just a crazy sharp knife for such a... Uh, for such a big knife. I believe that was an 8 inch blade. I think it was an 8 inch blade. I believe it's a 14 inch overall knife. I don't have a uh, I don't have a tape measure here but I believe that's right. It's uh, got a very nice McCarty handle. It's you know a little dinged up now because I mean like I said old knives had a lot of use but it is uh, it is just incredibly sharp and uh, durable. Uh, you do have to once in a while I put a little oil on it, you know, because it's it's not stainless steel; it's tool steel. And uh, like I say, it's I believe the steel is 1095. I think is what this what this was. It's not 01 or D2. And um, I believe it seemed like it was around 60 Rockwell. I, I really can't remember now. He he would be able to tell you. He's in uh, Colorado. His name's Jay Higgins. And like I say, I'll try to do a review on the, the knife. Uh, he uh, is a tremendous, tremendous knife builder and a real nice guy. I met him at the gun show in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, like I said, I believe it's been four years ago. Could have been five, but I think it was four. And uh, <coughs> he gave me a pretty good, what I thought was a pretty good deal on that. Uh, my understanding, he also has a, uh, like a, uh, a production grade of knife too, but this one would be considered one of his uh, customs. I believe his... Uh, his production knives, I think, are called Colorado Knife Company, and it has a big logo there that says Colorado Knife. But you can probably find some YouTube videos on this guy. If you're wanting a uh, large survival hunting type knife that's amazingly durable, like I say, you might give him a uh, might give him a uh, call. Look him up uh, online. I believe if you type in J J A Y J Higgins uh, in Colorado, I think he comes right up. The uh, last thing in this, and I'll get off here and quit yakking, is uh, my fire starting tools. I showed you earlier my tender and stuff. I have here uh, another um, one of the uh, waterproof containers of the Strike. Most anywhere matches. They say Strike anywhere, but 
they won't really. This one has the uh, abrasive inside the cap. I like that a little better. I bought this uh, this particular uh, matchbox I bought at the Army Surplus Store in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, but I don't believe that, I don't think that's a military issue. It's just, you know, they sell them at that store. Um, in addition to that, I have the, uh, the magnesium with the uh, striker, flint steel type striker that uh, you shave off the magnesium, put it into your tinder bundle or your kindling and then strike it. These work real well, especially if, if uh, things are very moist. And then I have, uh, I don't know if you can see the brand name on this or not, but I think it's a pretty common brand name. It says uh, Fire Steel on it, and then uh, on this it says Light My Fire, which I think is the name of the company. Um, again, like I say, it's just it's a ferrule rod, and uh, it was unused until a minute ago when I did the other video, and then I've scraped a little bit off, but that way I can go ahead and show you here. This is a, I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can. Um, this is a tremendous, tremendous fire starting tool and not very expensive. It's pretty common. I, I think they're $10, give or take a little bit. They may be a little less. And uh, between the, uh, the magnesium stick and the, uh, the uh, uh, ferro rod and the matches with the, uh, the tender bundles and stuff that I have, I have no doubt that I could start a fire. I don't remember what came in this little tube. I have three or four of them, and uh, they fit so tight you can hear them. You, uh, you actually, if you shove that down, it'll pop itself back up like that. You have to kind of rock it on there. Uh, it's pretty airtight. I think that I think it would shed a good amount of water. Like I say, I cannot remember what was in that. But I, I find that to be very, uh, very convenient, and uh, so I, uh, like I said, I store my fire, my fire gear in that. The uh, that's pretty much it. I know I, I kind of blew through that kind of quickly, but like I said, I, I spent so much time talking on that other one that I just wanted to redo it.